Welcome back to Candy's Classic Game Shrine, everyone. Today, we're gonna return to the third dimension and discuss a relatively new homebrew game for the Virtual Boy. And that homebrew game is Warzone. Warzone was created by several members of the Virtual Boy community, such as Kevin Mellet from Retro Onyx, Christian, known as KR155E, Jorge, known as Jorge CHE, Steven, Hagen Glaz, also known as Virtuous Rage, and a member known as Mumphy. Kevin is someone many of you are probably familiar with by now. His homebrew products have been featured on my channel many times over the years. Some of the things he's been responsible for are the Virtual Boy link cable, USB Virtual Boy controller adapter, Virtual Boy cart dumper, and Hyper Boy and Hyper Flash 32 flashcards. Warzone is yet another product of his, or at least in part. Kevin has provided funding and QA during the process. Chris's work has also been featured on my channel, but he is also one of the masterminds behind the View Engine. Hailing from Germany, Chris is a software developer by day, Virtual Boy nerd by night. He developed his first Virtual Boy game, Blocks, in 2002 and has been hooked ever since. He and Jorge created View Engine in the early 2010s and have been working like mad on various projects such as their futuristic top-down racing game, Formula V, and their custom game engine development environment, View Engine Studio. Jorge graduated as a software engineer at university and later did a master's on logic and philosophy of science. Currently, he works as an independent services provider for Linux servers administration and information security. But when it comes to computers, he's always been fond of software development. Being able to work on the Virtual Boy is how he meets that need and spends most of his spare time. He's contributed quite a lot in the homebrew scene for the Virtual Boy. Steven is a 3D artist by trade and has worked in video game development and currently works in VR simulations. Jorge approached him to help create some of the assets, and in May 2022, he created the framework for the cockpit of the tank that you play in. It was further added upon by others to become what you see in the game. In order to do the modeling, Steven used Autodesk Maya and then created the stereoscopic renders in Unity. Mumphy grew up in Sweden in the 90s and has been drawing for as long as he can remember. His hobbies have always revolved around art, and he took that passion and has been working professionally as a graphic designer and illustrator since 2012. In 1996, during a trip to the United States, he tried out a virtual boy, but believe it or not, was pretty disappointed. As he got older, he thought about getting the console, and in 2019, he finally got one. He is not as active in the community, but when he is, he will often try to contribute to projects by Kevin, Thunderstruck, and the Formula V slash View Engine guys. Warzone came to be as a result of Kevin wanting a new game for the Virtual Boy and not being able to do the programming necessary to make it happen. Kevin was fond of wireframe games such as Red Alarm and was inspired by an unreleased tank game for the Virtual Boy. He felt like a Battlezone type game would work really well for the system. This worked out great because Jorge thought this was a great way to take advantage of what the Virtual Boy was made for, which were 2D sprites and 3D parallax effects. In April of 2022, the game had begun its proof of concept production stage. By the end of May, Jorge had the basic wireframe rendering support in place to render the first mesh of a simplified representation of Battlezone's iconic enemy tank. By the end of June, Kevin had seen what Jorge had come up with and decided to fund the game. When funding was finalized and agreed upon, the true game production began. In July, they had the first prototype of the game with the player moving around in a 3D stage with a working cannon that could shoot missiles. Warzone was developed in View Engine Studio using a pseudo C++ dialect that's converted under the hood to plain C language with the aim to make the writing of the games in View Engine less cumbersome. It was then tested with the use of Kevin's flash cart, 
his rumble pack, and real Virtual Boys to make sure that the game would work on real hardware. The reason for Kevin's flash cards being used versus a different one is simply down to the capacity of the parts. Jorge wanted to have certain features such as PCM playback in the game and it would require more than 2 megabits of ROM space in the cart. As it stands at the time of this video, the Hyperboy and the Hyperflash 32 are the only Virtual Boy flashcards with that capacity. All of the assets in the game that you see and hear are created from scratch. As previously mentioned, Steven provided the initial version of the cockpit of the player's tank. Chris fine-tuned it by adding overhead bars and some other final touches. Here's an early example of what the cockpit originally looked like versus the final product. Kevin and Chris were bouncing ideas back and forth for what the title screen logo should look like. At first, they used Battlezone as a concept for the title logo. Then they got silly and made this one, followed by this logo with a shadow-like effect, almost like what you see in Red Alarm's logo. And then the final logo that was included in the game, as shown here. When it comes to enemies and landscape, that was Jorge's job. He created all of those from scratch. The music you hear in the beginning of the game and on the start screen is music composed by Technoax. Technoax makes great music that's often royalty free and I myself have used their music in many of my own videos. I suggest you check out their channel, I'll link it in the description. All of this hard work comes as an optional complete inbox with this lovely artwork courtesy of Mumphy. In February of 2023, after seven months of development, the game was complete. All that was left now was to finalize the production side of things, like having Mumphy create the artwork for boxes and manuals, and then to finally have them produced. That took several more months, bringing this entire project close to one year in total to complete. For the box art, Mumphy used Midjourney AI and generated some images. It was his first time doing something like this with AI and was curious to try it with this project, though he usually starts out with some quick sketches. Once he and Kevin settled on a composition and idea, he moved on to Blender 3D. He found and bought a 3D model of the tank that was to be used, set it up in the shot, and rendered it in Blender. Mumphy then used that render as the base for the line art in Adobe Illustrator. The illustration was finished and colored in Adobe Photoshop and then finally exported for print using Adobe InDesign. When asked if there were plans to add to the game or create a sequel, Kevin said he wasn't sure, but it could be a possibility in the future. He would much rather see Doom brought over to the Virtual Boy. A lot of folks involved in the Warzone game have a lot of neat things planned for the future. Kevin is working on another 128 megabit cart with 128k by 16 SRAM for the upcoming Formula V game, a proper multi-cart for the Virtual Boy, a wireless Virtual Boy controller, and a battery pack for the Virtual Boy. Jorge is currently working with Chris to finish the top-down racing game Formula V, which has taken most of their free time that's dedicated to the Virtual Boy. Once Formula V releases, the two will likely be back to trying to create new homebrew and improving the tools and documentation used to create new homebrew for the Virtual Boy. Their current and future projects can be found on the View Engine Patreon, which I'll link in the description. Jorge couldn't express enough gratitude to all the Patreon supporters for their invaluable support and patience as they develop Formula V and the rest of their projects. It's true, without you folks, these projects really couldn't exist. Mumphy is currently involved in the Formula V project and did some art for a Thunderstruck project as well. However, the specifics of that is unable to be discussed at the time. When it comes to other projects that's not related to the Virtual Boy, Mumphy created a couple of virtual reality games together with his brother and their friend. If anyone's interested, they can check them out. They're called Dun Dun VR free on Steam, and Liminal Phase on Steam, MetaQuest, and Viveport. As mentioned earlier, Warzone was inspired by another game by the name of Battlezone. Battlezone was an arcade game by Atari that came out in 1980 with a very similar concept as Warzone. 
In both games, you play as a tank trying to survive on a battlefield filled with numerous enemies. Battlezone is in green, Warzone is in the obvious Virtual Boy Red. Both layouts are very similar, but Warzone contains different artwork as seen in the background, enemies, and more. Jorge also took inspiration from Snowball Wars, a game that he developed a long time ago for the Virtual Boy. He tried to really make use of its stereoscopic capability as a game mechanic, and not only as a visual novelty. In Snowball Wars, the idea wasn't fully recognized, and Warzone seemed to be a much better fit for it, given its free first-person perspective. In Warzone, you're a tank commander, remote piloting a future generation tank in the year 2179. Unknown enemy forces have attacked and turned your country into a war zone. Using a red laser-based heads-up display, your tank gives you see-through armor capabilities while allowing you to pilot from a remote, fortified location. Your objective is to stay alive and hunt down the enemy AI-powered sentry towers, tanks, and helicopters. You navigate your tank using your onboard radar and compass. Two primary weapons are at your fingertips, a machine gun and the BFG. Use your machine gun wisely or else it'll overheat. Your BFG packs a much bigger punch, but takes some time to reload. Aim carefully and always be on the lookout for enemies that are constantly trying to hunt you. The controls are as follows. The left D-pad moves the tank in the direction that you press. The right D-pad serves two functions. Left and right makes the tank strafe left and right. Up and down allows for the height adjustment of the weapons. L fires the machine gun. R fires the BFG. The A and B buttons control the 3D depth while playing the game. In the menus, they function as a button to confirm selections. The start button pauses gameplay. Let's take a moment to understand the heads-up display. When the BFG is ready to launch, the icon on the right side of the cockpit window will light up. If the machine gun is being fired, the icon on the left side of the cockpit window will light up. At the very top center of the cockpit window, you'll find a compass to tell you which direction you're traveling in. Right underneath your compass is where you can find the amount of lives you have left. They're indicated by the number of tanks. In the upper left of the cockpit window, you have your score multiplier, and on the bottom left of it is your actual score. On the upper right side of the cockpit window, you'll see the word energy. The amount of energy you have left is indicated on the bottom right of that window. In the very center of the cockpit window, you'll find two sets of crosshairs. The outer one is to show the area in which your weapon will fire, and the innermost crosshair is to show the trajectory and height of your shot. This inner crosshair is what's adjusted with the up and down buttons on the right D-pad. On either side of the cockpit window, you'll find caution icons. These light up when an enemy or obstacle is nearby on whichever side lights up. At the bottom center of the cockpit itself, you'll see the cockpit radar. This shows enemy locations with dots. There is only one arena for the game in which the player fights waves of randomly spawning enemies. However, with the use of Kevin's link cable, you can battle against another player and enemies. Since the game is a high score based game, it goes on for as long as you can survive. With that said, there are things to discover as you play to keep you coming back for more. There are unlockable assets you receive as you play, and a hidden easter egg once you've unlocked everything. Sorry, but no further spoilers here, you'll have to figure it out yourself. Warzone for the Virtual Boy is a fantastic homebrew game. The music in the beginning, while just a short clip, shows you what the Virtual Boy is capable of. Yes, the game is in wireframe graphics, but it isn't a confusing mess like many people feel Red Alarm can be. The smooth gameplay and first-person view actually gives you the retro illusion of what a VR game should have felt like. Something that I wish Nintendo did more of when the system was actually fresh. I found the ability to further fine-tune the 3D in-game to be extremely useful in reducing eye strain and getting a more enjoyable experience of the VR feel to the game. To amplify that VR feel, I played using Kevin's Virtual Boy Rumble Pack, and it added a whole new level of immersion and fun to the game. It never ceases to amaze me what the community can do 
especially when they work together. And I can't wait to see what else is in store for us. So that was my look at the Virtual Boy homebrew game, Warzone. Let me know what you guys thought of the game and the video in the comments below. And until next time, guys, take care.